Queen Victoria came to the throne just a month after she turned 18 in 1837 upon the death of her uncle William IV. At the height of her reign, the British Empire spanned over a quarter of the world. The empire saw a time of rapid industrial expansion, educational expenses, the abolition of slavery, and the improvement of workers' welfare. After the outbreak of a civil war in India in which she stayed neutral and demanded a peaceful ending, Queen Victoria was granted the title Empress of India in 1877 from the British Parliament. With her death in 1901, her 63-year-long reign and the Victorian era, which was named after her, came to an end. This did not come surprisingly as the Queen was already quite old for her time, but it sure was a shock for her empire as most citizens never saw another monarch on the throne. But before we look at her death and her funeral procession, let's reflect on her last years on the throne. Before we jump into the video, I wanted to mention that I now also have a Patreon site where you can further support my work if you like to do so. You can get exclusive behind the scenes footage, unposted material and much more. The link will be in the description box. On September 23, 1896, Victoria became the longest reigning monarch in British history, surpassing her grandfather, George III. She demanded that any celebrations would be delayed to the following year in order to celebrate it within her Diamond Jubilee celebrations. Victoria celebrated her Diamond Jubilee in 1897. The procession took place with all Prime Ministers of the self-governing Dominions invited. And a fun fact here, it was chosen to invite all Prime Ministers instead of other foreign heads of state in order to not invite the Queen's unpopular grandson, Kaiser Wilhelm II, who they feared might cause trouble. The route used for Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee was six miles long and included troops from all over the empire. A Thanksgiving service was held outside of St. Paul's Cathedral so that the elderly Queen did not have to get out of her open carriage. The streets of London were full of spectators who showed their affection towards Victoria. Victoria's last years were further marked by the outbreak of the South African War in 1899. The Queen that avoided public appearances now had to show her support to the troops fighting in South Africa. She started visiting military hospitals, held medal ceremonies and troop training inspections. With the new public visibility of the Queen, she laid the foundation for a modern monarch. The war itself couldn't be tragic enough. In April 1900, her eldest son and successor was the victim of an assassination attempt while on his way to Denmark. A just 15-year-old boy shot at the heir to the British throne in a protest over the war in South Africa, also known as the Boer War. As the attempt took place in Belgium, this worsened the relations between the United Kingdom and Belgium even more. In addition to the assassination attempt on her son Edward, Victoria's grandson Prince Christian Victor, who was the son of Queen Victoria's daughter Helena, died of malaria while serving in South Africa. Further, she was forced to cancel her annual trip to France as the war was getting increasingly unpopular in the European mainland. The Queen thus opted to visit Ireland for the first time in 39 years. Victoria did not live to see the end of the war in 1902, which ended in a British victory. Tragedy struck once again in Queen Victoria's life when on July 30, 1900, her second eldest son Alfred, who by then was the Duke of saxe coburg and Gotha and living in Germany, died of throat cancer. It was the third time she had to bury one of her children, although she was not personally present at the funeral that took place on August 4, 1900. Upon hearing from Alfred's death, she wrote into her journal, Oh God, my poor darling Affy, gone too. It is a horrible year, nothing but sadness and horrors of one in kind and another. The other two children that predeceased her were Alice in 1878 and Leopold in 1884. Leopold died after falling down the stairs as he inherited hemophilia from his mother. Like most of you might already know, Queen Victoria suffered from the loss of her beloved husband Albert for the rest of her life. But not only in her inner circles did Victoria experience many losses. Her favorite attendant, John Brown, died back in 1883. 
At around the same time, the Queen's eldest daughter named Vicky, who was diagnosed with breast cancer years ago, received the news that her cancer was now spreading to her spine, at which point her doctors couldn't do much anymore for her. As Victoria got older, her health slowly started to deteriorate. She suffered from rheumatism and was thus bound to a wheelchair for her last years. In addition, her eyesight got worse, in fact even so bad that one of her last diary entries stated, From not having been well, I see so badly, which is very tiresome. Like every year since the death of her beloved Albert, Queen Victoria spent Christmas at Osborne House, which is located on the Isle of Wight. There, the Queen would face one last tragedy in her life. Jane Spencer Churchill, Victoria's Lady of the Bedchamber, and one of her closest friends died on Christmas Eve, 1900, after suffering from heart problems. Victoria's personal physician firstly withheld the news about her death, as he feared that it would upset the frail and labile monarch. Upon hearing of the passing of Churchill, Victoria was in such big shock she could barely eat anymore. You can find the following sentences in her diary the day she received the news. The loss to me is not to be told, and that it should happen here is too sad. Queen Victoria remained at Osborne House after New Year's 1901. At the beginning of January, she started claiming that she felt weak and unwell. By mid-January, she was drowsy, dazed and confused. Her doctors found out that the dying queen had suffered from a series of minor strokes. Victoria's immediate family was informed by the situation and traveled to Osborne to pay their respects. Queen Victoria breathed her last breath on January 22, 1901 at half past six in the evening. Her son, the future Edward VII, and her grandson, Kaiser Wilhelm II, were at her deathbed when she passed away. In her last request on her deathbed, she whispered that her favorite dog should be brought to her. Back in 1897, Victoria had written exact instructions for her funeral. She was a soldier's daughter and head of the army, so she requested her funeral to be a full military service. This meant that her coffin, for the first time ever in the history of a British monarch, would be carried by a gun carriage, and the procession would consist of army and navy officers. Also, she requested a white instead of a black funeral. That meant no black cloaks, drapes or canopies, and she further wished for a white pall on her coffin. On January 25, 1901, her sons Edward and Arthur and her grandson Wilhelm lifted the late queen into her coffin. On her request, she was dressed in a white dress and her wedding veil. Mementos from her extended family were placed into the coffin. On the right, she had one of Albert's dressing gowns and a plaster cast of his hand laid by her side, while she held a lock of John Brown's hair and a picture of him in her left hand. However, the items of John Brown were carefully concealed from her family by a bunch of flowers. Further, the wedding ring of John Brown's mother, which he had gifted to her, was laid into her coffin. The coffin with the lay queen was then carried on board the HMY Alberta and transferred over to Gosport, Hampshire. Several yachts carrying the mourners and the new king, Edward VII, followed the HMY Alberta. It was a rare occasion for a funeral procession to travel by ship, so it provided a big spectacle. From Gosport, the journey continued by train to the Victoria Station in London. The procession then continued to Paddington Station. The streets of London were crowded with people that took farewell from their former queen of 63 years. From Paddington, the queen's body took one last journey to Windsor Castle. As Victoria requested to have no public lying in state, the journey from Victoria Station over to Paddington Station was the only time her procession was open for the public eye. The funeral took place on Saturday, February 2nd, 1901, at St. George's Chapel, Windsor, and after two days of lying in state, she was interred next to Prince Albert, who died 40 years earlier, in the Royal Mausoleum in Frogmore. She was also the first monarch to be buried outside of Westminster Abbey and St. George's Chapel since her great-great-great-grandfather, George I, 174 years earlier. 
Her funeral was one of the largest gatherings of European royalty to ever have taken place. All of her surviving children, except for her eldest daughter, Victoria, who was suffering from breast cancer, and their families attended. Further, some of Queen Victoria's cousins and also other foreign royals, like Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria, were present at her funeral. Queen Victoria is to this day remembered as one of the greatest monarchs in British history. She experienced times of unpopularity after the death of Prince Albert as she withdrew herself from the public eye. But she soon again rose to be a popular figure as she embodied the empire as a benevolent, matriarchal figure. Her reign further saw the gradual establishment of a modern constitutional monarchy in Britain continue and reforms of the voting system increased the power of the House of Commons at the expense of the House of Lords and the monarch. <laughs>